Chapter 64, second part of Don Quixote from Servant is a treats about the Morisco record. Treating of the adventure which gave Don Quixote more unhappiness than all that had hitherto befallen him. The Knight of the White Moon had been seen from the city, and it was told the Viceroy how he was in conversation with Don Quixote. The Viceroy, fancying it must be some fresh adventure got up by Don Antonio Marino or some other gentleman of the city, hurried out at once to the beach accompanied by Don Antonio and several other gentlemen, just as Don Quixote was wheeling Rocinante round in order to take up the necessary distance. The Viceroy upon this, seeing that the pair of them were evidently preparing to come to the charge, put himself between them, asking them what it was that led them to engage in combat all of a sudden in this way. The Knight of the White Moon replied that it was a question of precedence of beauty, and briefly told him what he had said to Don Quixote, and how the conditions of the defiance agreed upon on both sides had been accepted. The Viceroy went over to Don Antonio, and asked in a low voice did he know who the Knight of the White Moon was, or was it some joke they were playing on Don Quixote? Don Antonio replied that he neither knew who he was nor whether the defiance was in joke or in earnest. This answer left the Viceroy in a state of perplexity, not knowing whether he ought to let the combat go on or not. But unable to persuade himself that it was anything but a joke he fell back, saying, if there be no other way out of it, gallant knights, except to confess or die, and Don Quixote is inflexible, and your worship of the white moon still more so, in God's hand be it, and fall on. He of the white moon thanked the viceroy and courteous and well chosen words for the permission he gave them, and so did Don Quixote, who then, commending himself with all his heart to heaven and to his dulcini, as was his custom on the eve of any combat that awaited him proceeded to take a little more distance, as he saw his antagonist was doing the same. Then, without blast of trumpet or other warlike instrument to give them the signal to charge, both at the same instant wheeled their horses, and he of the white moon, being the swifter, met Don Quixote after having traversed two-thirds of the course, and there encountered him with such violence that, without touching him with his lance, for he held it high, to all appearance purposely, he hurled Don Quixote and Rocinante to the earth, a perilous fall. He sprang upon him at once, and placing the lance over his visor said to him, You are vanquished, Sir Knight, nay dead unless you admit the conditions of our defiance. Don Quixote, bruised and stupefied, without raising his visor said in a weak feeble voice as if he were speaking out of a tomb, Dalsini del Tobuzo is the fairest woman in the world, and I the most unfortunate knight on earth. It is not fitting that this truth should suffer by my feebleness. Drive your lance home, sir knight, and take my life, since you have taken away my honor. That will I not, in sooth, said he of the white moon. Live the fame of the lady Dalsini's beauty undimmed as ever. All I require is that the great Don Quixote retire to his own home for a year, or for so long a time as shall by me be enjoined upon him, as we agreed before engaging in this combat. The Viceroy, Don Antonio, and several others who were present heard all this, and heard too how Don Quixote replied that so long as nothing in prejudice of Dalsini was demanded of him, he would observe all the rest like a true and loyal knight. The engagement given, he of the white moon wheeled about, and making obeisance to the viceroy with a movement of the head, rode away into the city at a half gallop. The viceroy bade Don Antonio hasten after him, and by some means or other find out who he was. They raised Don Quixote up and uncovered his face, and found him pale and bathed with sweat. Rocinante from the mere hard measure he had received lay unable to stir for the present. Sango, wholly dejected and woebegone, knew not what to say or do. He fancied that all was a dream, that the whole business was a piece of enchantment. Here was his master defeated, and bound not to take up arms for a year. He saw the light of the glory of his achievements obscured. The hopes of the promises lately made him swept away like smoke before the wind. Rocinante, he feared, was crippled for life, and his master's bones out of joint, for if he were only shaken out of his madness it would be no small luck. 
In the end they carried him into the city in a hand chair which the Viceroy sent for, and thither the Viceroy himself returned, Kaja to ascertain who this Knight of the White Moon was who had left Don Quixote in such a sad plight.